Hi. I am so happy and so excited today because have you ever wondered how many people in the United States identify as pansexual or how many bisexuals identify as queer? Today we have those numbers and I'm going to be presenting it to you right after I mention that. Today's video is brought to you by my latest MMF bisexual romance, Rules for Spanking, and more about that at the end of the video. Until then, let's talk numbers because... For so long, I have been allu alluding to numbers, but I have not had the actual studies to back it up. Now I do. And quick, quick story. So this is how it all came about. So last weekend, I was working with Dr. Mary Andrews. She and I are creating a presentation for PFLAG later on this month, and we were going over some stuff. And she asked me, you know, are are there any studies out there that talk about the percentages of people who identify as various identities within the bisexual spectrum? And I didn't think there was. So I went home and I took a look for it. And it turns out there was one groundbreaking 2,000 person survey done looking at the number of people who identify as pansexual, number of people who identify as queer in Australia, which is good. <laughs> Actually, I wouldn't be using this if I wasn't also able to find two more studies after that in the United States that um, talked about number of people identified as bisexual and queer. Those studies in the United States were much smaller. Like, like one was about 240 people. The other one was like 450 people about. And those are, you know, it's better than nothing. But with such small numbers, it's hard for that to be reliable. So what I did instead, being math, being science person, was I took the numbers from the American study and I found out the range uh, and I compared it to the numbers in the Australian study. And it turns out that proportionally speaking, like in comparison to the people identified as bisexual, the two studies are very, very close, which allows me to say that the numbers I'll be presenting today are something that you could generally trust. I, for the mostly straight and for the uh, bisexual numbers, I use the CDC study I always quote, which is from January of 2016, link to it's below. And then for the um, pansexual and the queer numbers, I'm using the Australian numbers. And the links are also in the description below. So now, well actually not now, but I need to say that there are gonna be people who see this graph and really not like it because there's something called confirmational bias. And what that basically is, is that you look for things that uh, confirm your bias. And there's many people in the bisexual community that believe that all bisexuals are queer. They just they believe it more than anything simply because everyone around them is queer. All the bisexuals they know are queer. So they just assume that all bisexuals are queer. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you're like that, you're not going to like these numbers. And you're free to say these numbers are low. Um, and I'm sure there are reasons, there are good reasons why you could think these numbers are low. And there are other people who say that the numbers are high. And there are actually good reasons why those numbers are high as well. This is not a perfect uh, representation, but it is the best and it is the closest and the most accurate that we have. I can tell you for absolute certain that if these numbers change at all, they're gonna change by fractions of 1%. So nothing is gonna switch order. There's not even close a way that anything's gonna switch order. The orders are exactly right. The proportions are very, very close, if not exactly right. It's just like the numbers might be off here and there. Now, having said all of that, because <laughs> I have to, because I know it's gonna be pushback. Um, having said all of that, it's time to present the graph for the first time anywhere, the numbers of people who identify as various identities on the bisexual spectrum. Bam. So proud. So let's take a look at this graph and let's see what it says. We can see that by far, the number of people who identify as mostly straight outnumber everyone by a lot. And as opposed to like queer, the mostly straight identity isn't like a political identity. Like people aren't calling themselves mostly straight to make a political statement. Um, they're people who use a term when being asked. So if someone asks them, you know, do you, are you sexually attracted to men 
or women or both equally, they describe themselves as being mostly straight. And that's 9.8% of the U.S. population, almost 10% of the U.S. population identifies as mostly straight. That's, that's a huge, huge number. Now, how many people identify as bisexual? It's a number I've quoted often, which is 3.8%. I pulled it from the CDC study that I usually quote. Now, how many people identify as bisexual? Because this is the new stuff. Of the U.S. population, 1% of the U.S. population now identifies as pansexual. And you might think, oh, 1% is a really small number. First of all, that's of like 300 million people. So that's a really big number. And second of all, that's really huge because pansexual is a relatively new term. It's only been around for, I think, less than 20 years. So the idea that pansexual is as large as it is after, after such a short time is huge. So 1% of the population identifies as pansexual. And what percentage of the U.S. population is bisexual and identifies as queer? 0.9%. 0.9% of the population is both bisexual and uses the queer identity. Now, and also uh, the rest of the identities, the bisexual identities, the, uh, the two spirits, the fluids, the heteroflexible, the homoflexibles, the, the polysexuals, the omnisexuals, and all the rest of them, that represents 0.3% of the population, the U.S. population. Again, it's like 300 million people, so 0.3% of that is a big, big number. So those are the percentages of people on the bisexual spectrum. How fascinating is that? I am so proud to be the one to present this to you because it's not been presented anywhere. This is the first time, literally the first time anywhere that these numbers are being presented in this way, inclusive of all the bisexual identities. Now, the Australian study was more was great and brilliant more than just for presenting the percentages that we haven't really had before. Um, it also talked about characteristics of each of the identities. So let's go through the characteristics of the various identities. I've talked about mostly straight often, um, not from the Australian study, but from other studies. We've, we've found out that Mostly straight bisexuals, they tend to have minimal same-sex behavior, and they tend to be comfortable within straight culture. That's mostly straight. Next is bisexual. Bisexuals are just all over the spectrum because people identify as bisexual as well as our other stuff. So they'll have characteristics like the mostly straights. They'll have characteristics like the queer. So let's skip over that and go to the next one. Pansexuals. I felt this, and when I went to the various Pride festivals this summer, I saw it, but the Australian study proves it. Pansexuals, by a vast majority, are female. The, in the Australian study, there are so few male pansexuals that it barely made a blip on the charts. Out of 2,000 people, there were a handful of males who identify as uh, pansexuals. So, Pansexual is really a female identity. More than that, pansexuals tend to be younger, a lot younger than the people who identify as bisexual. And also, if you are a, are a non-cisgendered person, you are more than likely to identify as pansexual versus bisexual. Still, a lot of people identify as bisexual, just the proportion of people who identify as pansexual who are non-cisgendered is very high. So that is pansexual. Also a characteristic I didn't list here is that pansexuals are more likely than people who identify simply as bisexual to be interested in the opposite gender. So if you identify as pansexual, you are more likely to be in a heterosexual relationship than you are if you identify strictly as bisexual. That I would never have guessed, but that's one of the things we learn when we do science. So next, queer. Now there's, let's be clear, two groups of queer people that I, that I could be talking about, but only one that I am. We could be talking about everyone who identifies as queer, or we could be talking about bisexuals who identify as queer. For a little reference, when we talk about everyone who identifies as queer, 75% of the men who identify as queer describe themselves as either being 
mostly gay or exclusively gay. And that's 50% for women who, 50% of women who identify as queer think of themselves as either mostly gay or exclusively gay. But now let's talk about the bisexuals who identify as queer. Those people lean highly towards being female. They're a very small percentage of male bisexuals who identify as queer. It's mostly females, like in the pansexual group. Not quite as severe as the pansexual group, but the bisexuals identify as queer. They tend to be female by a lot. Um, if you are a non cisgendered person, you are more likely to identify as queer than you are than bisexual. And also, if you identify as queer, you have a highly likely chance or a high chance of leaning towards the same sex. So that is what we have learned from the Australian study, from the two American studies, and from the CDC study. How interesting is that? And I think this gives me some, some numbers to, to uh, base some of the statements I've made before, which was that there is a bisexual spectrum. On one side of the bisexual spectrum are the mostly straight people, and they outnumber everyone else by a huge number, by a huge margin. And then on the other end of the bisexual spectrum are the queer bisexuals, and that number is, you know, significantly smaller. And this also affirms something else that I've said, which is that if you are a queer person, a queer bisexual, you have to be who you are. You can't hide from it. You have to embrace it. The only way you will ever truly be happy is if you embrace your queer identity. At the same time, remember how you feel when a straight person or a gay person tries to push their identity on you. You don't like it. So please, if you are a queer bisexual, don't push your queer identity off on all the other identities within the bisexual spectrum. Because as you can see from the graph here, and as science shows, the number of people who identify as queer is very small. It heavily leans female, and there are not a lot of males who identify as bisexual and queer. So whenever you push your identity off on all the other people in the bisexual spectrum, all you're doing is isolating people from the bisexual identity. And I'm so happy to be able to say that I have numbers now to back that up. So let's respect everyone and let's, uh, let's embrace everyone's identity and allow people to embrace identity that feels comfortable for them. I will be posting this graph on my Instagram account. I'll be posting this graph on Twitter um, so that you can take it and you can use it and you can you know, spread it around because we really need to be talking about this. We, we really need to know that these are the numbers and the, the study exists. And I also put the references to the study in the graph itself. So I, you know, being scientific, being responsible, you can use these num you can use this graph and spread it and feel very comfortable that you're not spreading fake news. So now if you'd like to support the channel, you can check out my latest MMF bisexual romance, Rules for Spanking. It is getting a ton of great reviews on Amazon. It is a best-selling bisexual romance on Amazon. Um, it includes a lot of other bisexual romance stories, and you can get them all for just 99 cents. So please, if you'd like to support the channel, check that out. Or if you'd like to support the channel, you can also check out my t-shirts on Amazon. I'm proud to say that this is the most popular bisexual t-shirt on Amazon today. Uh, but I have more than just this shirt. I have 19 others um, that you can check out in the link in the description section below. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I do many videos on bisexual topic. I usually do them on Sunday, but if you'd like to know when a new video comes out, you can always click on the subscribe button and click on the bell. And by doing that, you'll be telling YouTube that you'd like to know when a new video comes out. Until the next video, stay cooler, my bisexual friend. Stay cooler. And check out Rules for Spanking and my t-shirts. <laughs> Bye.